Chapter 9 A Visit to Zarancher Lane It was a balmy summer afternoon. Zeddy sat next to the tram window transfixed on the scenery outside. The tram sped past the giant windmills towering along the rolling hills on both sides of what was once the winding, windy Vasco Highway. Zeddy remembered his father reading to him The Man of La Mancha where Don Quixote fought ancient wooden windmills when he was bewitched to imagine they were his enemies. These modern windmills were as tall as ten-story buildings, grinding out electricity day and night. Zeddy couldn't help but wonder how Don Quixote would manage to fight these giants in shining armor. Zeddy's mind kept drifting back to his dream of Zamira, catching dark matter zetterflies and then floating up in the air when they had filled his butterfly net. It was such an amazing dream! No dream had ever felt so real to him before. It was like he had really been on Zamira, and Zamira seemed like an amazing place. It was so bright and cheery, and the grass and air seemed so clean. The sun had been shining, but it wasn't the heat of the earth's sun beating down through the holes in the ozone layer. It had felt warm and gentle instead of burning and blinding. Zeddy closed his eyes and let his mind wander back into that glorious dream. Zeddy soon dreamed he was floating through space, whizzing past stars and planets. He reached the edge of Zamira much more quickly, and he had no hesitation as he crossed from space to planet. Zeddy landed softly on the plush green grass, rolled over, and looked up at the bright blue sky. The most glorious dark matter bugs imaginable glimmered and glowed above and around him. Zutterflies and all types of glowing and gleaming dark matter bugs filled the sky of Zamira. Zeddy had never seen anything like these dark matter bugs on Earth. Some of the zetterflies were the size of eagles, while others were the size of tiny fruit flies. Their patterns were unique and colorful, and they glowed in the most unusual colors ever seen. The air smelled so lovely, like the strong, sweet fragrance of his mother's African gardenia. Zeddy decided to walk around and pick the purple and blue flowers that littered the grass. Everything was so gorgeous and peaceful that Zeddy never wanted to leave. The screeching wail of the speeding tram stopping in Livermore woke Zeddy from his dreams. He rubbed his eyes and gathered his backpack and duffel bag. As Zeddy led Zeddy through the crowded aisle towards the door, strangers' voices and the smell of chemical exhaust from the tram filled the air. Zeddy looked around the tram station and everything seemed dirtier and dimmer than before. Still transfixed by that dream, he found himself dazed in his earthly world that now seemed drab. He wished that one day he might find a place like Zamira, a place with no pollution, no burning sun, no constant changing of the laws, and no international government to keep him from laying in the grass and floating in the air pulled by zutterflies. Zeddy knew in his heart that the IG would never allow that kind of fun. It was still too far to walk to the professor's house from the tram, so Zadie hailed a taxi to take them to Zarantra Lane. The sun was beating down, and the steel buildings reflected its rays, blinding passerbys. As they approached Zarantra Lane, Zeddy and Zadie felt a sudden urge of energy fueled by nervousness. The trip from the tram station seemed to have taken forever, and they pulled into the long driveway that led to 777 Zarantra Lane. However, time seemed to speed up as if they were in a movie being played on Fast Forward. Zadie paid the robotic taxi driver, and the two quickly marched to the professor's front door hand. Zadie reached out and pressed the doorbell. A long, droning electronic bell echoed inside the large house. It felt like an hour that they waited on the front porch, but it was actually only a couple of minutes before a man opened the door a crack and peered out at them. Seeing a woman and child, he smiled and opened the door. "'Can I help you?' the man asked. "'We're looking for Professor Zachary Zenith. Would that be you?' Zadie asked, with as much confidence as she could muster. "'I am Professor Zenith,' the man answered. "'Is there something I can do for you?' Zadie turned and waved to the taxi driver that it was fine for him to leave. The yellow taxi turned around in the oversized driveway, flying off in a blue blazing fury. The professor looked at them oddly, wondering who these people were now abandoned on his doorstep. "'Why, yes, professor. I hope you can help us,' Zadie finally answered as she turned around to face him. "'We need to talk to you about Zamira.' Professor Zenith's face turned white as Zadie spoke the word Zamira. He looked like he might pass out. Instead, he opened the door and motioned for them to come inside. Zeddy and Zadie picked up the bags they had brought with them from the taxi and walked into the house. As soon as they entered, Professor Zenith looked around, outside, cautiously, scanning the landscape. He pulled in his head, shut the door, and latched the ten bolts on the door.
Professor Zenith turned to face his guests. Who are you, and what do you want from me? Who are you? Professor Zenith demanded 